So dreams real quick. Uh, again, I can experience dreams in, I think, two. I know for sure you can in three. Uh, and then REM is one of the most vivid. Uh, and you do need them. And people didn't understand why, because we know you die if you don't have these eventually. Um, so <clears throat> there's some interesting reasons why they think we need them. Before we get into that, uh, let me talk about some of the characteristics. Uh, most dreams, by the way, it's not like some portal to another world where you can see what's going to happen and, oh my gosh, this dream told me to do this. That means this doesn't happen, doesn't exist. We've tested it too. Don't just think I'm being like skeptical and being like a meanie who doesn't like magic and all that crap. <clears throat> um, they test all these things. So like um, the intuition thing I think I told you guys, uh, they tested that out. They uh, Really easy one to do that of course, gambling. You just have somebody gamble uh, based on their gut feeling uh, and see if it improves the results and it never does. Um, they, they're like, ah, oh, it's gonna be this one, I know it. Put all the money on this, this chip. The odds of you getting that chip right or wrong or that selection or that pulling the lever, it's the exact same as if you never did anything. Um, <clears throat> same with dreams. Uh, dreams, you can have these prophetic dreams and something's gonna happen and um, it almost never happens. And you don't remember it when it doesn't happen because who cares, you were wrong. It just goes off in your brain and you forget it. But guess which times you do remember? The times it happened to be kind of right, yeah. So you could have a bunch of dreams that are like, this is gonna happen, I'm gonna be rich, or this person's gonna die or get sick or whatever, and you know, 99 times out of 100, doesn't happen, and you, you, off it goes in your memory, you forget it even existed. But the time that it might happen, whether you dreamt something and, and it kind of happened, or you had that gut feeling and you were right, uh, those times you remember. Uh, it's, a, it's actually a judgment error called a, um, uh, damn it, what is it called? I'm trying to remember what it's called, but it can't. Availability heuristic. Um, something that's super exciting for you, uh, you're much more likely to remember than something that happens all the time. So when you have those rare instances where it was correct, um, you're like, oh, I see I was right, that's why I follow my gut, or listen to my dreams, but they're wrong way, they're not, they're not right enough to merit basing anything on them. So is it like deja vu when you... Deja vu is a different thing. We'll talk about that in perception. Basically deja vu is when you have your, when your body, when your body, when your brain goes to pull a memory you have and it fails, uh, your body basically says, oh crap, well we tried to remember something we couldn't. So I was clearly just trying to remember whatever it is you're looking at. So. I didn't explain that very well, but mm -hmm. what it means is it's a retrieval failure for memory. Deja vu is when your body, your brain tries to remember something, but it can't. So your brain never likes doing things it can't explain. So it just rationalizes it. Just like the hemisphere thing, when they told them to go get up and they asked them, and the left hemisphere had no idea, did they say, I don't know? What did they do? Have an Made up an answer, right? Um, that wasn't even true. And, they, and they, they didn't even know that that was what was happening, they just, the brain did automatically. Oh, oh, it's because we're doing this. So deja vu is a similar phenomenon where you try to pull a memory, it fails, and your brain has to explain the sensation you had, this, this feeling of, um, of, of a memory of something familiar. So it just, whatever you're looking at, it says you've seen that before, even though you haven't. So just like your brain lies to yourself and says, I got up to get a drink because I want a Coke, but really you were told to, uh, your brain pulls a memory, fails, uh, and it's like, wait, I, I remember something. Oh, clearly I remember that, whatever it is you're looking at. And that's the sensation you get of deja vu. Like, I've seen this before. Um, no, your brain failed to pull a memory and it's trying to give you a reason why you think you remember something. It's like that, we saw that before. Yep, definitely, that's happened twice. This is the second time I've seen that covered move or whatever, you know, um, so that's what that actually is. I mean, there's a chance you actually saw something similar, but I mean, deja vu itself is actually just memory failure. So anyways, that's actually part of unit three. But what was I talking about? Dreams? Oh yeah, they don't, <clears throat> they don't predict anything. Um, uh, you just remember the ones that are kind of accurate and you forget the ones that aren't. Uh, and it's novel, so you remember it, but the ones, that, the ones that happen all the time and don't happen, you forget those because that's what always happens. Anyways, uh, dreams, they are um, uh, four out of five are negative. Yay. <clears throat> For most people, although some people almost never have them, at least I can't remember hardly any, I, I hardly remember any negative uh, dreams myself. I do have them, obviously, but I don't think I have them at that rate. Uh, and that actually depends on your own 
Um, it's a personality trait we call it neuroticism. How sensitive you are to negative emotions. So things like anxiety, worrying <clears throat> about things, caring what other people think about this or whatever. The more intensely you feel that negative feeling, uh, the more um, uh, uh, neurotic you are on that uh, scale, which we'll get to later in minute seven. Um, so people who are more prone to negative emotion, people who like, you know, let's say for example, um, you post a picture on Instagram or whatever, and then someone uh, rips on it. All right, some people, that really affects them a lot, right? And you all know those people. Um, and they can't get over it, and it bothers them the whole day or for many days, and then, you know, they just, they can't actually process and get over it. And some people just go, well, you're an idiot, and then they never do anything about it. Uh, or they say something back, and, you know, and, and it's over for them in a minute or whatever. Uh, that's kind of uh, how you respond to negative emotion. That's a good indicator. Um, people that are really sensitive to negative emotion, you see that a lot in their dreams because their brain is trying to deal with their anxieties. So things that might worry them. Um, my wife, for example, has dreams all the time about all these terrible things that are happening. And it sounds miserable, but it's not because that she's a miserable person. It's just that she has these little worries that come into her head every once in a while. And her brain tries to deal with it by uh, uh, acting them out or fixing them in her dream, essentially. So that's why she has a lot of them. All right. Um, I hope my wife ever watches these videos. But anyways, so um, that's, that's kind of what determines how most of your dreams are gonna be. So if you're in a point in your life when you're particularly stressed out, let's say there's a big test coming up or, um, I don't know, what's another big thing for high school? That's all I can think of for high school. <clears throat> oh, let's just say you're having a bad time with your friends. Uh, you're feeling um, alienated from them or they did something you didn't like or you're on the verge of breaking up with your significant other, whoever that is, that'd be a particularly stressful time. Uh, that's gonna be reflected in your dreams, almost certainly. You're gonna have dreams that are filled with negative experiences, not because your body's trying to torture you, it's actually trying to cope with whatever you're afraid of or fearing or stressed out about, all right? Uh, I would imagine a lot of you dream about your parents, your friends, or school. Does that sound about right? I guess you should say family, because you can have brothers and cousins in there too. So I bet almost all of your dreams rotate around family, friends, or school. Does that sound about accurate? Okay, or a school type event. I used to dream about basketball all the time, like when I was um, playing basketball. Um, so I know that's technically not school, but it's attached to school. <clears throat> that's because most of your dreams are just about the, um, um, your everyday life. And your brain's trying to either make sense of or cope with any negative emotions you have, or even celebrate ones that, uh, positive ones that you're experiencing. Um, it's just kind of cycling those in and throughout your day. Um, it's not gonna be usually too crazy. You are gonna have some random weird dreams that don't make any sense, but they're usually full of things that happen in your everyday life. <clears throat> so when your life changes and you guys are now not going to school and not seeing the same friends, those themes will gradually leave your dreams and they'll be replaced with new ones like your work or your wife or husband or your kids or um, you know, whatever, or now you're thinking about college, dream about college or, or whatever. It's gonna fit whatever situation you're in mostly. All right, so the, the vast majority of dreams are just the stuff that happens to you on a regular basis played out. <clears throat> okay, um, what else was I gonna say about dreams? Most of them are negative. Oh, when you're in a stage three or four sleep, your body actually becomes almost completely relaxed. So even though most dreams are not, have no sexual content, uh, males and females do get sexually aroused, uh, at least their genitals do. So you would think that they're having a dream that's sexually active, but they're not actually. Um, they're just experiencing those sensations, the genital arousal, obviously different manifestations in males and females. Uh, as far as what's actually happening. But uh, it doesn't mean, and it usually doesn't mean, that the uh, content is actually sexual. It's just when you're relaxed, that's actually when your um, uh, body exhibits the signs of being aroused. I'm not gonna discuss those for the internet uh, with high school students, but those sensations aren't usually because of the content of the dream. It's just the fact that your body's in a relaxed state. And that actually is what uh, makes you feel uh, uh, arouses you sexually um, as far as uh, 
your anatomy goes. All right, so it doesn't mean your dreams were, uh, have that content, but that's what it might look like on the outside. <clears throat> okay, uh, so that's normal for males and females. And um, so dreams, why do you need them? There are several theories as to why we need them. Uh, and all of these, by the way, have some degree of truth attached to them. So we'll go over those and that'll probably be it for today. <clears throat> um, reasons for dreams. Am I missing anything major on the dream slide, by the way? It's mostly just me elaborating on this, I think. The first one. Any major topic I missed in the first one? Okay, good. Uh, <clears throat> I should say dream theories, because we don't know to what degree each of these are correct, but dream theories. I can't write. All right, I'm not going to use the exact words I used on the um, uh, actual note slide, but I'll, I'll kind of briefly explain. The first one, this one's the coolest one, actually. Uh, this one has to do with psychoanalysis and Freud. He believed, and he's not entirely wrong here. He's, not also, he's also not entirely right. I've actually tested this myself, too. So if you can, test it out in your dream. Uh, he believed that your dreams are uh, figurative representations uh, for your unconscious uh, desires or um, uh, anxieties. And he's not wrong, exactly. Now he thought you could um, identify, he and Carl Jung thought that you could take one thing and it meant the same thing in everybody's dream. So like, for example, a common dream um, is uh, your teeth falling out. So they tried to figure out what that could mean because a lot of people have it. It, it. Women tend to have it way more than men do in their dreams, but it happens. Um, and they think that has something to do with being self-conscious about your appearance. Um, so they tried to like map things like, oh, if this happens in your dream, it means this. But it turns out that that's actually not true. What is true though is Things in your dreams can represent things, though. They're not going to be universal. So, like, something that is in my dream. Oh, like that ghost lady I told you about. That actually might represent something to me. Like uh, a fear I have or um, something that I'm angry at or whatever. And it might manifest itself in my dream as that creepy ghost lady in the basement. All right? Uh, and my instinct was to hit it. So uh, either it's something I'm afraid of or something that I'm... Uh, angry at or holding aggression against or, or, or whatever, all right? And it could just be random. Uh, but if you see recurring themes in your dreams, like if this ghost lady was popping up in like every dream I had, it actually might represent something that I have to deal with in my own uh, psyche, okay? So <clears throat> he believed that there was a um, uh, manifest content. So the stuff you see the actual um, thing, I'll give you a real example because mine is just made up. There's a real example though um, from a, uh, a clinical psychologist that uh, he shared about a patient. Not, no names were shared because that would be illegal, but <clears throat> he could talk about what happened uh, and the latent content. So this means, manifest means what you see, the object. Latent means what it actually means, all right? So the hidden meaning behind it, what it actually represents. So this lady, had this uh, reoccurring dream, or at least this theme that was reoccurring. The scenario might have been different, but the same thing kept happening. <clears throat> In many of her dreams, this, uh, uh, what she described as a gypsy butcher in chains was chasing her and trying to kill her uh, in like all of her dreams. So in, in almost all of her dreams, she was just running from this thing at, at some point, it happened a lot. Even if the dream setting was different, this thing would come around frequently and chase her in her dreams. <clears throat> okay, so we've got the uh, butcher. Is it obvious what that butcher, I mean, obviously in the dream, it's a butcher. It's got cleavers, it's trying to kill me. But is it obvious what that butcher represents in my life? What's what I'm afraid of? No, it doesn't. So how could I find that out? Because clearly, because it's a reoccurring theme, it's the same thing over and over. This lady's got some issue with something that she's afraid of, all right? And she's got to face it or, or whatever. How could she find out what it is? Because I mean, She's not afraid of butchers, and she's not afraid of like eating animal meats or anything like that. Like what, how could she find out? <clears throat> she, 
She could, but I mean, that's really hard, man. Like, what the hell is that supposed to be? <clears throat> okay. Because it's not like the obvious thing. She's not afraid of knives or butchers or meat or anything like that. All right. <clears throat> it turns out, if you have a, a recurring theme in your dream or just things in your dream, you can actually talk to them in your dream. So if you're having a reoccurring dream or scenario that you don't understand, and I'm not saying this works for every dream because you can't just like go up to a beetle in your dream like, what are you? Like, you know, it could just be a damn beetle. <clears throat> but if I'm seeing the same thing in my dream over and over and over and over and over, or scenario, uh, you can actually ask it what it is and sometimes it'll tell you. And in this case, for the lady, it did tell her. It told her, I'm your fear of death, was, is what it was. <clears throat> so, in this case, the butcher was the manifest thing that kept popping up in her dreams. And when, uh, after she talked to her psychologist, he's like, all right, next time you're in that dream, if you remember, turn and face it, which is, which is by the way, recommended for all dreams. If you're running from something, um, and you turn and face it, it actually activates different parts of your brain and you'll actually deal with the threat. Um, <clears throat> I think I've done that so many times in my dreams, that's why my instinct is to like hit the thing if, I'm, if it's there, to face it and, and fight it as opposed to run from it. Because I used to run from it when I was a kid, and then I learned about this, and I started incorporating it, and now my brain does it automatically. When scary things pop up in my dream, I just face it <clears throat> or ask it what it is, and it goes away or it tells me or whatever, which is really cool, by the way. <clears throat> but <clears throat> I don't always remember that. But uh, in this case, the therapist told her to do that, and she eventually remembered, and it told her, I'm your fear of death, right? She told her therapist. And now her therapist knew what to do. She's afraid of death. I told you this like the first day of psych. What do you do uh, when you are afraid of something and you want to get over it? Yeah, you gradually uh, work towards facing it, whatever it is, right? Obviously, if you're afraid of bears, the idea is not to go running into the woods to find a bear. That would not be the right thing to do, right? But you could do, we'll start with things of like thinking about a bear and then looking at pictures of bears and then watching videos of bears and going to the zoo to see bears. And that's probably where you want to call it because call it, you don't know what they're going to do when they're actually out there. But it might help you cope with the fear of it. Anyways, so in this case, the therapist is like, all right, now we know what we can do. So she was afraid of death. So they uh, dealt with that. I can't remember the exact sequence, but I'd do something with... Um, uh, she would think about it and then talk about how she felt uh, and then think about the situation of like what's going to happen when she does die because she's not afraid of like people being killed she's afraid of like her dying one day sort of thing so she talked about that and thought about it and like what a funeral would look like for her and then they would go down to uh, they went down to the morgue and they would like uh, look at the, 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 the coffins and things like that. And then they would gradually get closer to her actually seeing them work on the bodies uh, as they get, uh, you know, uh, dressed up for the funeral or whatever. Because they, they basically like take your organs out and put a bunch of preservatives in you and stuff like that. And then off you go to your grave to be there forever. <clears throat> um, so uh, they did that slowly, uh, you know, one step at a time, uh, all that she could handle all the way up to the point that she was able to be in the room when they were doing the stuff with the bodies, and she was fine. And then, uh, guess what? Never caught, uh, appeared in her dreams anymore. No more uh, crazy gypsy butcher. Right, exactly. So again, the reason why I say this is right, but not entirely right, is you can't just go into any dream and be like, what are you, what are you, what are you? What are you? It, <clears throat> it doesn't work like that. But if you do have a reoccurring dream, sometimes you can face it and or talk to it and find out what it is and then deal with that, and then that'll actually leave your dreams. So it happens sometimes, so it's, it's worth trying. Uh, and again, from my own personal experience in doing this, you do it so much, you, it eventually becomes your automatic reaction to it. So <clears throat> it's kind of cool. Would that count as lucid dream? Because you're like controlling Kind of. At least in that dream, lucid dreaming is where you're aware that you're dreaming, yeah. but you're, it's basically where your frontal lobe is activated when it's normally not mm -hmm. in a dream. Um, and then you can kind of think about what's going on. That's when you go like, whoa, this is weird. Why am I in a cabin? with my two friends from grade school who I haven't seen in 10 years. Like that happened to me once. I was just like, why am I, or high school. Like I had a dream that I was in a cabin with my high school friends. I haven't seen them since like, I was like 19 or 20. And I was, I was just like talking to them. And I'm like, wait, I don't live in a cabin. I haven't seen you guys in forever. What the hell's going on? And I realized it was a dream. And I woke up shortly after. But <clears throat> that's lucid dreaming. Realizing it's a dream. And sometimes you can manipulate it too. I've also done that too. Where you're like, okay, cool. Now you can kind of like do things in it. Like the first thing I always try to do is fly. 
Sometimes I can, which is cool. Uh, and sometimes I cannot for some reason. Like one time I remember specifically, like, sweet, it's a dream. I'm gonna wake up like five seconds, so I gotta do something cool. So like I try to fly and like I do this like gimpy ghetto version of flying. Where like if this is the ground, I'm all uh and I just can't really go very high and I just I keep hitting the ground, I'm like, come on, wait, and then I woke up. But then a couple of times I've just been like like Peter Pan, just off. Um, so I, I have no idea what determines that. That's what a lucid dream is. So I, I would say kind of, but if you kind of make it a uh, normal practice for you to face, in this case, a fear, right? Uh, you you just automatically start doing that. Because I do remember when I was a kid, like if there was something scary, I would run from it. But when I found out about this stuff, however many years ago it was, and I started doing that, like that just becomes my automatic response to it is to face it or talk to it or whatever. And it's weird too, because somebody chasing you in a dream. And you're like, oh man, here it comes, it's gonna get me. And they, every time I've done it, they just stop. And they just don't keep trying to stab you or whatever. And then you can talk to them or they go away or, or your dream changes or something like that. So I don't know, yours might be different. Maybe yours will actually keep going after you. I don't know, but mine don't, so it's pretty cool. But yeah, so this is, again, it's not every time, but if it's a recurring thing, it, it might. It, you might be able to talk to it, face it, whatever, and it, it might go away. Uh, the other ones aren't as cool. <clears throat> well, they are cool, but they're not as, misunderstood or mystical or whatever. Um, this is also where your brain tries to understand things or learn things. So if you're trying to figure something out, like you got a problem, like say you, you're like, man, I, um, I, damn. So you're working on something, an essay, you're working on an essay and you're like, man, I don't know what to say. And it's bothering you. Uh, when you're asleep, your brain still has that anxiety. So you might have a bad dream about a test or not having the essay or something like that. But your brain's also too uh, trying to figure out how to fix it. So yeah, you do have the anxiety part, but your brain's also trying to fix it. So uh, this is why sometimes when people say sleep on it, uh, you can wake up and actually think of a solution just out of nowhere. Because when you're sleeping, your brain actually is thinking about the problem and what you might be able to do about it. Uh, and that's where you can maybe understand the question better or the situation better, uh, learn it better, and then come up with a solution. Um, so it's actually um, a part of your um, understanding, processing, processing, and coming up with solutions. And it's cool, it really does work. If you're ever stuck on something, if you go to sleep and wake up, sometimes the next day or a day or two later, all of a sudden you're just like, oh, I just do this, and it works. It's cool. Uh, also for consolidating memories, So if I do learn something new that day, my brain will actually practice it, which is weird. Uh, but that's why actually, if you're learning a new video game or a new skill or you're studying, when you wake up, if you've got a normal sleep cycle, you're able to dream, your brain practices that while you sleep, right? So it, it strengthens those neural connections in your motor cortex or the memory wherever it's located. Uh, so you actually remember it better and you actually perform it better the next day. So every day you're practicing and you go to sleep and you get a full cycle, you're actually a little better. I'll finish this up tomorrow. Picking up where we left off yesterday. We're talking about dreams. So we talked first about how psychoanalysts can use them potentially sometimes to like reveal um, your unconscious desires or traumas or things like that, right? We give the example of the lady with the butcher uh, and it was her fear of death and then her therapist went and they slowly um, conquered her fear, right? All right. <clears throat> Um, it's also where uh, you can learn things or understand them or help help understand them. Uh, so when they say sleep on it, sometimes they're talking about, you know, you don't want to make a quick decision or, or, or be hot-headed. But another way is your brain actually kind of works on that problem or solution while you're sleeping. Uh, and you can actually wake up and uh, have a new idea or an insight or uh, do it better. <clears throat> uh, we also know that it's good for consolidating memory. Uh, and we know this because they've tested this. So if I wanted to figure out if dreaming helped me remember things, not from my dream, I mean from like everyday life, how could I test that out? What kind of experiment could I set up to do that? So my, my hypothesis here is do dreams help with memory? How could I do that? How could I set up an experiment like that? Um, I think we talked about this, but like basically you have the news flashcards 
and then not flashcards, but like you let them study for a test, okay. and then let one one of the groups sleep and one of the groups don't sleep and see how good they do on the test. Yeah, and that's basically what they did. Uh, they had a group that they did not allow to sleep. I don't know if exactly they kept them from falling asleep or like you know um, would wake them up if they started to dream or whatever. But yeah, they let one group get the full um, uh, duration of sleep, like eight hours. I think they had another group get like 10, another group get like four, and another group get like two. They did various intervals like that. And the groups that did the best, uh, as far as like learning something one day, and then being able to perform that skill or give that information accurately, uh, the best groups were the ones that were allowed to continue their uh, sleep cycle as normal uh, and get the dream. Uh, the REM sleep in there with the dream. So they do know it has, it has an impact somehow uh, neurologically on, um, on consolidating uh, and storing your memories so you can uh, do it better. That's a big reason why you want to uh, get sleep for a big test. Um, well, not only that, but it also uh, plays a role in, how can I phrase this? Um, not stimulating, not even consolidating, but in uh, or strengthening, there we go. Strengthening neural connections. <clears throat> I talked to this kind of before. Uh, this is why you're technically better at something the next day, generally speaking, because uh, your brain practices it while you sleep. But it's more than just like you practice it. How does practice actually make me better at something, whether it's a skill or remembering something? Um, go. It does have to do with that, okay, awesome. Uh, but I want like a, a so you're, that's totally correct, but how does that play out in my brain as far as making me remember better or perform better? So it's kind of like muscle memory when you do something that's kind of different, your brain kind of like remembers and repeats that. It does, I think she said that, but like, if I'm looking at the actual neurons in my brain, what's happening to make it better the next day? Because you're right, it's repetition, and the practicing it and all that, but I mean like, if I go down to like a mechanical level, looking at my neurons, what's happening that makes them more efficient? Uh, does that have to do with like myelination? Yes, myelination for the most part, yeah. So I do, I, when I'm sleeping, my brain does that. It uses those uh, neurons, but then it also notices that I'm using them more, and it adds a little bit of uh, uh, myelin to the axon, all right? Just like working out, it's the same concept. If I work something out and I push to the point of exhaustion, I actually break down a little bit my muscle tissue, so my body, Builds the same amount there, replaces it. What does it do? It makes it a little bit stronger, right? And that's kind of the same uh, concept applied to neurons. The more I'm practicing and using it, whatever this new skill is, uh, that is the uh, point at which my brain uses it more when I'm dreaming, but also that's when the myelination takes place and it adds those extra layers of myelin to the axon, right? And that allows the electricity to. Uh, uh, conduct better across, so I lose less energy and it's more efficient and quicker. All right, so you have uh, myelination occurring. Oops. There we go. All right, and fifth, this is where uh, my brain, this is all also a, a, <clears throat> related to my neurons, but in a different way. Uh, this is where my brain can uh, make sense of or cope with uh, what's called neural static. And that's with my moods. So, most dreams are negative or positive? Negative. Mostly negative. I think I told you yesterday why. Why is it that most of them are negative? Huh? You remember the Yeah, they, they impact you uh, more intensely. So if I have something really good happen, or something really bad happen, obviously I'll feel really good or feel really bad, but I'll actually feel more intensely the negative emotion. It'll bother me more. That's why celebrities can have like two million followers and everyone's telling how pretty they are or smart they are or whatever and then they get like two trolls that rip on them and it ruins their day. It's like you get two million good ones and then two bad ones, but which ones stick out the most? It's the bad ones, right? Because we're more sensitive to negative emotion. Um, before I get into this, why are we more sensitive to negative emotion? There's actually a good evolutionary psychology uh, explanation for this. So think about it. Why are humans more sensitive to negative emotions than positive? Okay. What, what do you mean? Where's that sheet? Okay, like, per se, like, you think about, like, um, people's opinions about you. Like, what if, like, 
you call do you kind of like qualify that as a threat against your reputation or something like that? Okay. That? Yeah, I, I accept that one. Okay. So a threat is more well it's more threatening obviously, but it's more significant. Um, if you think about it realistically, in a day or any one thing that can happen, there's only a few things that can make your life a lot better. Like, um, you know, even if you get a good grade on a test, or you pass your driver's test, or your parents give you a car, or, uh, you know, all the way up to the most extreme, you win the lottery, there's only so many realistic things that can happen to make your day way better, right? There's only a few of them. And it only does it a little bit, realistically. All right? What about the bad things that can happen to you? Is there more or less of them? There's way more. And they're actually worse, too. Because you can make your life better, but it's only going to be a bit better each day. You can make your life way worse in one single day, right? You can have an accident, damage your body or your brain permanently, or, you know, takes you months to recover. Uh, you could actually just die, right? That's the worst thing. <laughs> then you're just out of it, right? There's all kinds of things that can make your life harder or worse, uh, but there's only a few that can make it better, and it's a little bit better. So it's good to remember them and feel good, and that's why we like doing things that are... Um, productive and good because it gives us a good feeling and we feel fulfilled, but we're very sensitive to the negative because that is uh, much more threatening to our actual lives, at least evolutionarily speaking. All right, so that's why we remember them more clearly because it's more important that I remember uh, where that nasty uh, pothole is that I might step in and break my ankle than uh, uh, where that pretty flower was if I thought the flower was particularly pretty. Right? One of them is a little more important. Like, yeah, I might want to see the flower or show somebody, like, oh, look how cool this is. Uh, but it's more important that I remember where the pothole is that I could break my ankle in, especially if it's back in the hunter-gatherer days when that could mean I can't get food anymore. Um, so that's, that's a good reason why. So uh, we are really sensitive to negative things, some more than others. We'll talk about that. That's neuroticism and personality in Unit 7. But uh, some are more sensitive than others. But dreams are where you sort of deal with that or cope with it or try to make sense of it. So if you are affected by some negative thought or feeling, and it's, it's making your mood um, more negative, whether you're pessimistic or sad or, or anxious or stressed, um, this is where your body kind of tries to cope with it or figure it out or deal with it. That's why a lot of your dreams end up being negative because that's what it's doing. It's trying to work through your anxieties, um, cope with them or figure them out, and, you know, however you want to explain it. Uh, but that's a large part of what you're doing. So these emotions that maybe you don't understand uh, or you are not pleased with, this is where your brain kind of deals with them and tries to file them away uh, and, and take care of them, if that makes any sense. So another reason why they say sleep on it is oftentimes if you feel particularly bad uh, one day, like let's just say you broke up with your boyfriend or vice versa, they broke up with you, whatever it might be. Uh, usually in either case, you feel pretty bad for a little while. Uh, obviously a little differently, but uh, you'll notice each day you feel a little bit better, all right? Um, some people, again, it takes longer than others to actually feel better or healed or whatever, but you actually do heal a little bit each day. Uh, that's why I'm sure your parents or friends would tell you if you had that scenario, don't worry, the whole time cures all wounds uh, phrase, uh, that's what's going on. If you deal with it and sleep on it, your brain will work through it slowly, and each day it gets a little bit uh, better. So anything really bad happens to you, a breakup, you get fired, you get embarrassed, whatever it might be, and it's upsetting you, you'll notice that it tends to get less and less um, um, negative as the days go on, because that's what your brain is doing. It's slowly filtering it out, all right? And again, some people bounce back faster than others, but that's what we're all doing uh, when we're sleeping uh, and dreaming, all right? Do know, though, if you are in an era, uh, a, a period of your life where you're experiencing that because of, like I said, a breakup or a, a getting fired or whatever it might be, um, your dreams are going to be kind of defined by that for quite a while. So you'll have some pretty negative dreams, I would imagine. But that's your brain trying to get rid of that uh, negativity uh, and move on with your life. Make sense? All right, cool. That's dreams.